which is all that, okay? Absolutely no egos, okay? No egos, okay? If there is, leave it out and then leave it outside. If you try and bring it in, it's going to go super quick. So <laughs> serious, yeah? If you take it down, take it so serious, yeah? But everybody's friends, okay? And at the end of this, I promise you, yeah, everybody's going to be like, look at your brothers, I swear to God, okay? Because you've been through a fight camp together, it's super close, everybody's going to be super close at the end of it, yeah? So basically, our gym, PMA, you'll be representing, boys, okay? You'll be fighting against uh, Paradox Health and Fitness, Azzy Thomas' gym. So he's doing exactly the same as us. It's people with no actual experience at, at all. I cannot do no wrong. I cannot do no wrong. Yeah, I've been up in the gym, but I do not flex much. Only take a shot if it's the best one. But I don't ever treat it like a test run. I swear my heart racing like F1. I'm on the way up, trying to find a view. Riding round, riding round the hills. With a motto, with designer on the hills. She got Molly in the water and I got her in the fields. Yeah, got her in the fields. At the party in the hills, now she gotta keep it real. Hasn't talked to her father in a while, and her mama on the pills. Now she trying to find herself on the balcony with my people smoking weed right now. Overlooking Hollywood, yeah, yeah, we probably should. I told her look around, girl, you living in a dream right now. Overlooking Hollywood, yeah, yeah, we probably should. I've been in the gym so long, I cannot do no. Funny. Now I'm on the up and up, yeah, I feel like I'm a autopilot Bad bitch from the centerfold You bring her out, but I bring her home Don't play with her, like my drink, I keep it straight with her Yeah, I'm on the way up Now I'm in the hills like LC Now there ain't shit that they could tell me Now I'm in the VA feeling healthy Now I'm helping people that help me I promise I'm not in my feels Don't talk about people, no, only ideas Bullshit ain't paying my bills All I see are M's, I ain't taking no L's On the balcony with my people smoking weed right now Overlooking Hollywood, yeah, yeah, we probably should I told her look around, girl, you living in a dream right now Overlooking Hollywood, yeah, yeah, we probably should I've been in the gym so long I cannot do no wrong I've been in the gym so long Gym so long, I cannot do no wrong. I've been in the gym so long, I cannot do no wrong. On the balcony with my people smoking weed right now. Overlooking Hollywood, yeah, yeah, we probably should. When I was younger, um, I used to, um, in primary school especially, I used to get uh, terrorised because I had like a scar on my head, like a big circular scar from when uh, they pulled the heart rate monitor off my head when I was a um, baby, like just first born, you know, getting health checks and stuff. So I removed loads of skin and I think for years and years I was just getting terrorised like bald patch boy and stuff like that. And um, I think because of that reason, because of the bullying and stuff, my mum pushed me and my brother into karate. I would have never have thought like personally that I had made the decision to go into learning the martial arts or anything like that, but me and my brother got put into it when we were about seven, about that sort of age, like. And I did that um, for about four years, and I think that probably gave us a lot of confidence because of the, the competition we used to get and, um, you know, just thinking that you know how to throw a punch properly and stuff like that. That's probably how I first ever started in martial arts. And then I had um, uh, quite a big break after that. 
Um, my bowels twisted when I was 11. It was like just after the operation to sort the scar out on my head. And um, I was out for ages because um, obviously my bowels had twisted. They had to be taken out, uh, shortened, and then put back in. And then I couldn't do any training for like over a year. And we just fell out of the routine of going to karate. And I think it just fell out of interest as well. Um, a bit of time went by. Um, started getting into the weightlifting just because I watched a uh, Schwarzenegger uh, documentary and I just wanted to be massive. So I started doing that and then I pulled my back. So I knocked it on the head because my dad would just uh, make me paranoid that um, I would just be a writ off old man if I carried on lifting weights with a bad back and stuff like that. So we started karate back up when we were 15 and um, one of my cousins attacked the instructor. So we got kicked out of the gym and uh, I started Thai boxing a few months later after that because all my mates um, started with uh, with Eugene. I started going there and I've been doing it ever since. I've been doing it for 15 years now. When I first started fighting, um, I think it was like I was doing well against a lot of the people in the gym and I think I just wanted to, I, just, I think I was just full of testosterone and I just wanted to fight all the time. I think that's what it was. I never was like that outside of the gym. I was never like, a person that would fight on the street or anything like that I just feel like I just had a lot of aggression in me and I just wanted to have a go um, in terms of fighting like my motivation early on um, like I, I knocked out my first opponent and um, he was like really experienced so uh, I think that drove me to like the feeling that I got after the fight you know feeling amazing and you know being on top of the world the high of the victory, I think that kept driving me to, to want to keep getting back in there. Uh, also, um, I did really well in my first couple of fights and I was fighting much older men. Like I was only 16 and I was fighting fully grown men all the time and I was battering them. And the only thing that was happening was I was just getting tired and most of the time. Like my f conditioning and my fitness wasn't very good. So I felt like that's where I was lacking. But like I, always, I always felt like I was better than the people that I was fighting. I would just sometimes just get tired. So. I think I just I thought that with time eventually things would just click into place and just start going right for me. So that's sort of just what kept driving me. I I really like the the competition, you know, of being a fighter. Um, I kind of feel like you're just proving that you're better than someone else, and uh, I really like that. Obviously, getting your hand lifted and being realised as the better person, you know, it's a great feeling. A lot when me and my brother were younger. Um, We'd watch martial arts films all the time, you know, like uh, either the old dubbed Kung Fu films or, you know, Van Damme films, we were mad on the Van Damme films. As soon as the credits would start rolling, we'd just get up and lever each other. So it's like we were just mad for uh, fighting from a really young age. Obviously, when I got to um, go to the karate gym and the, the tyre boxing and stuff like that, you were allowed to do it. Like, you weren't being told off for beating each other up, basically. So I loved it. It was great. Um, the... The thought behind um, being a fighter, um, I think early on, obviously I won a few fights when I first started, so like I was getting that feeling constantly. Then I felt like when I obviously stepped up in class of competition, like I started uh, dipping with my um, results and stuff. So um, I just wanted to put more in, of my time into it just so I was doing things right and, and getting better. When I first started training, I started uh, Thai boxing with Eugene Valerio. Um, I remember the first lesson that I ever trained with him. He, uh, he walked in through the door and um, he had a big baggy t-shirt on and uh, it was covering his shorts. So he didn't even, it didn't even look like he had cats on because his shorts were like right up his ass anyway. <laughs> and he had a, a flat, cap, uh, flat peak cap on and he looked like uh, Norman Wisdom. And he was like, oh, how's it going? And he had the bum bag on as well. And I thought, what's this? This fella looks like fucking Mr. Motivator with a, with a bum bag on. And then he's getting this, doing all these mad stretches, like going one way, going the other. And I was thinking, this is like Mr. Motivator on GMTV in the morning. I was like, what have I signed up for here? And then he started kicking the pads and I'd never seen anything like it in my life. He was so powerful and so strong. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, I need to learn how to kick like that fella is. Um, so I trained with him for about six months till I had my first fight. Um, and then obviously I won that fight and I knocked the guy out. Um, 
and then, like I felt like at that moment he was like aware of who I was. It was like I felt like that was the first time he ever remembered my name. You know, because it was a busy class. Like there was a lot of people there. Um, he was a two-time world champion, and he had a lot, he had had a lot of experience himself. Um, he was a good. He was a really really good trainer. He was just a little bit unreliable sometimes. And then like later later on down the line towards the end, like um, I know he's got like. Uh, personal issues and he was just getting worse and worse at the end so um, he was not turning up to fights and stuff like that so I uh, I ended up going to another gym and I started at um, Next Gen in Liverpool the uh, MMA gym I was just there doing the Thai boxing classes that they put on and it was really good training and they were all helpful and just wanted the best for you all the time and that it was like giving me a really good sense of what a gym should be like and how how your teammates should treat you and stuff like that and I feel like I took a lot away from that um, and put it into my own club. The trainer who was then at Next Gen set up his own club a few years back and uh, when he left Next Gen to do his own thing um, I went with him and I've been with training under Carl, Carl Ryan from the Two Brothers Gym for about eight years now and uh, I won it like one or two titles um, with Eugene, when I was with him, I think I won the British and the European, and then when I was with Carl, I've um, won probably about 12 more titles, something like that, so like it's well uh, improved me as a fighter, technically, uh, you know, in every way really. The, the biggest struggle that I had when I was started, um, I generally found was sparring with uh, Scott Thomas and Eugene. Um, because I was there consistently, I would have to do a lot of sparring with them too, because there'd be some nights where the gym was heaving and other nights where the gym was really quiet. Um, and I, because I was there all the time, I was getting rewarded by being allowed to spar more often and spar with them a lot, but then they'd hammer me. Like, I'd be getting dropped with body shots all the time. And I don't know whether that was just because I wasn't in the best of condition when I started, or whether my stomach might have been weakened from my bowels twisting years before. But like honestly, the amount of times they dropped me with body shots or winded me when I first ever started was insane. Like I was just constantly getting uh, hit to the body by them. And well, they used to have a rule in the gym, and it was like you go light to the head but hard to the body because you can recover from a body, body shot. But like headshots, you know, you might damage someone or knock their confidence or make them not want to return again. But the body, it's like it's fair game, and they would just hammer me all the time. <laughs> And then there was, there was a point where I was training and I used to think to myself, why am I doing this to myself? Why am I turning up here every week to train with these two just for them to batter me? And then the, the gym, next, I stayed with it for a while and then like it's seasonal. So then the next year, when everyone was coming in just after Christmas and they wanted to sort their lives out and stuff like that, um, I'd spar with them and I'd just annihilate everyone else in the gym. And I just thought to myself, that's just it, it's just pecking order. <laughs> Not like I'm getting beaten up by them, but I'm beating up everyone else, so I must be doing something right. And they had been doing it longer than me, so I just kind of accepted it. Being in the gym itself, like a lot of the people that you train them with, they're going through the same struggles as you're in the, in training and they're motivating you, trying to help you carry on. Um, you have a you have a good laugh, you know what I mean? It's not all about just struggling and beasting each other all the time. It's like there's a lot of banter in the gym and you know everyone has a good laugh with each other and a good time and I think that makes you want to come back a lot as well you know like if you've got stress and you're coming here and you're laughing all the time or you know joking with the lads and that it takes your mind off things or you know it perks you up a bit so that was also uh, another good reason to keep coming back. The brotherhood like the camaraderie type thing. When I first started tie boxing I didn't know that you could um, compete with it I never knew that there was like matches or shows and stuff like that like I never it was never a reason for me starting. After a while, I asked the coach, you know, if it if it was possible, because I was wondering if you could fight or you know if there was a way to test your skills against someone else, kind of thing. So um, he he said, yeah, they put shows on and this that and the other, but like they were always in the cities, you know, quite far away. I ended up going to two shows like early on, which I I kind of feel like um, like set us up to like where I wanted to end up and where I started. So I went to a show in Wolverhampton and it was the K1 tournament it was and we were supporting a Welsh fighter on the K1 tournament. He didn't train with us but he was a teammate of my trainer at the time. So we went over to watch him and it was in um, 
some sort of like uh, town hall or some sort of arena. It was massive. Like the venue was huge. There was loads of people in there. It had like tiered seating, and to me, like seeing that for the first time, it was like something out of Gladiator, you know, with the balconies and people watching and stuff. I thought it looked amazing. Um, there was uh, there was the bad company fighters like uh, Andy House, and he was there fighting. He had like uh, this mental haircut, with, like all blonde streaks, looked like a skunk, and uh, like a proper cool um, gym tracksuit, and like they were just walking around with their hands wrapped, like looked proper cool. And I just thought, oh, fucking, I'd, I'd love that to be me. Um, and I watched like loads of really good fights on the night. The music was blaring in there, and it was like setting a really good atmosphere. Me and my mate were like, it was a young lad that trained with us at the gym. We were just buzzing all night, and I just remember thinking, like, I wanted to be a part of that or be able to to be in that sort of situation myself. And um, then I went to a show at Tramia Football Ground, and there was um, a couple of title fights on the bill, and uh, I thought like. That like if you were a champion, you were like the best of the best. You know what I mean? And there was certain people fighting on the show that I at the time thought myself like with a bit of time I could beat them people. And I thought well, I should definitely be doing this or have a go at this. And then after that, not long after, I had my first fight and I won it and just been doing it ever since really. I was fighting uh, as a as a professional and like I was like half and half with my record at certain points. And I, I felt like I wanted to, I'd been reading up on the internet and I'd been seeing certain people like professional fighters, or all they did was train was their job, you know, because they were sponsored or one reason or the other. And I thought to myself, if this is what I want to be doing with myself and I need to be training as hard as they are to be able to compete at their level. So I think um, deciding to quit my job when I was younger um, helped me because I quit my job for about, a year, maybe a year or two, and I had like, like the best run of success that I've had in, in ages, you know, like at around that time. And uh, like it, it upped my game massively. Like I think that was a big um, big thing for me, the, the choice to quit my job. Early on in your career, especially when you're not experienced or used to it, your mind can wander and sometimes they can look for a reason like to get out of there, you know. and. And it might not be the way you are, but like if you're not fit enough and you're getting your head punched in and you're just thinking, why am I doing this? You know, you question a lot of things or, you know, uh, in your lead up, you didn't train as hard as what you should have. You know, that might creep into your mind during the fight. Like fighting is all about concentration. And like at the, at the start of fighting, I feel like my concentration wasn't the best. And uh, like I let myself down with the performances that I had. Like, you know, when you get back to the changing rooms and you feel like you've embarrassed yourself in front of like your peers and stuff like that, or your trainer, you know, who puts the hard work in with you. I felt like that was the worst thing about losing. Never feeling like I wasn't good enough, more like I just embarrassed myself because I didn't do things. R like I left questions unanswered, basically. So um, with having been fighting for so long and like having so many fights and stuff, I feel like I've basically achieved everything that I want to. Like, early on, I realised that it's really important to set goals. Even if you're not reaching them, at least you've got something to work towards. Like, I have a lot of people that come and train at the gym and they're like, oh, I just can't have the motivation to stay or to stick at it. You know, if they haven't got a fight and stuff like that, especially, or if they've not got a target to hit a certain weight or whatever. And I feel like making myself want to achieve certain things, like setting goals, is like my driving force, really, with the with the training and the fighting itself, you know, that's why I keep wanting to do it, so I get to that level or I win that title. Um, but I honestly feel like everything I've ever set out to do so far, I've achieved. So um, just to keep myself active and my mind in it, because like, I do feel really motivated in the way that I finished this last year, I want to, uh, over the next year, like, I, I would like to pick up the WBC European and then possibly one more world title you know for me to be really happy and just like have no regrets whatsoever they're the, they're the two last things I'd want to do before I'm done because I can see it coming to an end now like but um if it if they weren't to come off or whatever which I like I have a like high level of confidence in myself that I will achieve them um I wouldn't be too bothered you know I'm, I'm happy with everything and how it's gone like um, the shows that we're putting on now are going really well and I feel like I just want to keep building that and growing on that, use that momentum.
like there's a lot of really big and good promotions out there, like huge ones, you know, like that get you a lot of exposure. Like there's great shows in the UK, like Yokow, Muay Thai Grand Prix. You know, there's there's a lot of good shows out there. The Raw Combat League is a good show as well. Um, obviously, it's nice to be out there and get the exposure and stuff like that. But if the people that you're fighting are of a high calibre and you're achieving what you're setting out to achieve, the only thing that really matters at the end of the day is you and the person that you're facing opposite you in the ring. You know, like the all that is nice. You know, it's a nice bonus, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. So it doesn't bother me if I if I wasn't to be fighting on shows that are like accepted like that because it's the fights that you're having and the experiences you're gaining and stuff like that 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 really counts, not who you're fighting in front of or the promotion that you know is considered to be the top promotion or whatever. I don't really drink or smoke or anything like that. You know, I don't really have much vice, but I'd say um, my diet my diet was like really bad when <laughs> I when I don't have a fight. My diet is the worst thing in the world. Like I put a lot of weight on as well between fights, which isn't good for you either, I don't think. But when I do fight, I'm pretty good. Like I'll I clean things up as much as possible. Um, training, I'll train five days a week normally. Um, I'll I'll get him like three good runs, and that'll be anywhere between four and six miles. And then, uh, or I might add some sprints in somewhere, and then I'll. Uh, or, and then I'll do like either weights or a circuit on the other days and then in the nights I'll make sure I hit three nights as well. So I'll train five days a week but three of them days I'll do twice a day. Um, it should be like mostly tie boxing, sparring, uh, sometimes boxing if my legs are a little bit banged up or you know if I'm serving squatting and my legs are ripped off. Um, do strength, strength training sometimes, do a lot of uh, strength and conditioning next door at um, gym 13 as well. Uh, also what I do is uh, I go down to Birkenhead uh, once or twice a week for sparring as well because they just got a bigger catchment so they've got more uh, dedicated and active lads and I like to go and uh, mix it up a little bit as well you know you get to leave all your, your problems from here and go down there and just just have fresh training. I've had loads of fights that I felt were great that I feel like were highlights to me. Uh, winning my first title was big for me because it gave me a lot of confidence because the guy that I beat had had like 50 fights and he was like, he'd, he'd knocked a lot of his opponents out as well and he was telling everyone at the venue that he was going to knock me out as well. And I just felt like that was, gonna, that was spearing me on on the day, you know, to beat him. And I beat him and I took his belt off him as well. There's a lot of the titles that I fought for have been vacant, but he was one of the champions that I took the title off. Um, when I fought Andy Webb when I was a youngster, like the, the second time round, I think that gave me a lot of confidence. That was a turning point. Andy Brocklebank when I beat him. I beat loads of really good champions. Um, when I when I first won the WBC title, the national title, like I trained so hard in the lead up to the fight that I never once doubted myself or believed that it was even a possibility that I could lose the fight. So like I felt like winning that was like one of the best things I've ever done. Uh, picking up the world title, that was really big for me this year as well. The opponent I had was uh, an Italian lad and he'd been active in Thailand all year, fighting on Max Muay Thai all the time, um, beating Thais. Uh, I've, I felt like I'd been offered to fight for world titles in the past, you know, like two or three times, and I was never ready in my mind. I just thought, no, I'm not good enough or I'm not good enough to deserve it or it's not, it's not the right time. So I was always saying no, even if the money was good and stuff like that. Because I felt like if I was to fight for one, I'd want to be... The best I could be when I had it, you know, because there might have been um, last-minute opportunities or whatever. And I, I felt like when that opportunity got offered to me for for me to fight for the world title, that it was the right time for it. And I've and everything just went right in the camp. I didn't get injured once. My diet was really good. My weight came down well. Uh, my sparring was good. I barely got injured. Uh, I went into the fight and I performed really well. I stuck to my game plan all the way through the fight and I won, so I was really happy. So that was one of the best things. I think that it's good that we're training kids in the gym and we're offering the kids classes that we do because uh, they're, they're the future at the end of the day. They're the ones that are going to be carrying the sport on. They're, you know, you're giving them uh, a platform to either fight on a big show or to aspire to it. Um, you're keeping them out of trouble, keeping them off the streets. 
and then um, you know, like with with things like Thai boxing getting accepted into the Olympics now, you know, you you're producing the chance for or even the possibility that one of them might be able to end up fighting in it one day. You know what I mean? And that, like that would be the end goal, like, you know, being able to get fighters that could place or even, you know, enter the Olympics, that'd be amazing, like, you know, that'd be a great thing. That would be something we'd be really uh, happy to do. Uh, locally, like on a local sort of level, you know, you just wanna you wanna be when my time's done with fighting I want to be able to still compete against other clubs with my fighters and prove that we're the best that way. You know, um, I feel like having the shows gives us the opportunity to to present them with decent opportunities. Like they may they may never be able to get the chance to fight for a title if they were if they were bouncing from other shows. You know, if they're beating everyone, people might be scared of them. Whereas like others might be seen as too risky to to give them the chance to fight the local lad or whatever. Whereas if we've got our own show, we can make the best fight each other. We can make good fights happen like that, and uh, you know I think that's that's a good thing about the promotion being as good as what it is at the moment. In an ideal world, um, I think the venue that we've got now is great. I think it's one of the best venues in Wales that you can be using, especially in this area. Um, we've got two shows planned there for next year, um, one for March and one for September, and we're going to experiment a little bit and see if we can. Uh, increase the capacity because that room can fit 2,000 people in so you know as an end game you'd lo we'd love to fill that room like that would be like it'd be good for the local fighters to be able to be fighting on a level or a platform that high we get better fights on on the on the show and obviously financially it's a lot better for us as well and um, we've got a massive show planned at Deeside Leisure Centre as well where we're co-promoting with um, Carl Ryan at the Two Brothers Gym uh, they do the Stand Your Ground promotion in Birkenhead and uh, we're working on something together in the summer next year. Ate some bread, I got to live, I do some bread I contradict the contradiction, monster vision Saw this life and I pondered in it I was only 16 when I wandered in it I was living off dreams, now I'm smart to live in I would love to talk, I got a concert This shit is dope Say I fucking sound like Drake Cause I'm great Why, why must you hit? Why, why are you fake? Die, die in a lake I, I am the good Time of our great Great of all time, I just ate them alive You can shut up and jive That's why your girls hit me up all the time Never hit them back, no But hit them from the back, no We can take it to the back, yo See, I'm just spitting facts, bro Mac go, back, 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 bro I, I just put the city on the map on my back I was broke, now I stack I was busy spitting crack, living fat Pay the tax, now I made it all back, bro That's why I'm the Mama couldn't even pass electives Now walk through the halls and get mad respect from adolescents Looking up and asking questions Dap them up, take a picture, sign the paper, sign a titty They convinced me, late Da Vinci, Rock Da Vinci, New Medici Making history, make, make, making history White, white girl, Balenciagas I just been living a dream Pull up, I'm pull up on something and banging I'm killing the scene Everyone follow the north, they want to know whatever we bring too much on my mind, like I feel like I'm all in my prime. I got models and dimes that I never replied to. All these rappers are dead to me. Who you alive to? This ain't nothing to me. I've been starting since high school. No, I've been doing this shit from the jump. I got all of my niggas with props. I swear to God, I am a
a two minute round tonight. Two minutes ago, do you think you're going to be able to do that? No way, man. No way. Look how, look how much you can come along in two weeks. That third week, though. Third? End of the third week. Look how much you can come along in any of us. Okay? You're here now after three weeks. Imagine another three weeks of this. Yeah? You're going to be better than one. Okay? Another three weeks. Brilliant. Any questions? I wanted to be a pro footballer, I wanted to play in the Premiership, but things don't turn out how you expect, and that's just the way it went for me. I just wanted to prove people wrong, because I know when I first told people I was going to get into it, a lot of people laughed and sniggered and thought, he's not going to get anywhere, but that was my motivation to prove people wrong, that's, a, that's my motivation with a lot of things. If someone tells me I can't do something, I'm going to go, right, you know what, mate, I'm going to fucking do it, and you're going to be a fan then, you're going you're to be trying to, you know, want to be my mate, when I do make it, you didn't want to know me when I was nobody, but when I make it, you're going to be like, all right, Bob, how's it going, mate? And I'm going to be like, yeah, however, I remember you, lad. I remember you. I never forget the times when you used to say this, that, and the other, and, you know, doubt me, and now, and now you're not doubting me sort of thing. Even though I'm, only, I'm still early in my career, I'm not exactly... And even if I get to the UFC, I'm not going to think I'm a someone. I'm always going to be a nice, humble guy. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I suppose I've, I've fought in the uh, Echo Arena on Cage Warriors, so it's quite an accomplishment for only four pro fights. Doing pretty good at the moment. I'll, I'll always remember the people who back me, and I'll always remember the people who didn't. So my circle's cl uh, quite small. The people who want to get into it now, when I remember what they used to be like, there's no chance I'm letting them in. I'm only letting people in who believed in me from day one, or people who've believed in me since they've been in my life sort of thing. But the doubters, nah, I don't want to... Be... You know, I, I, like, I like the fact they'll support me and stuff, but we'll never be like bros or anything. You know what I mean? I travel to St. Helens when I'm in a training camp three times a week to get my training in with a proper team. I mean, there's not really, there's good boxing gyms and there's good Thai boxing gyms around here, but an MMA facility, a proper team, there's nothing really around here. So if you want to make it in this game, which is, it's, 
since Conor McGregor came around, it's, it's gone massive. Everyone knows what it is now because of him. So he's, he's done great things for the sport. Um, it's getting bigger and bigger. But when I first started 10 years ago, no one knew what it was. People either assumed it was cage fighting or UFC. Oh, you do UFC, don't you? And I'm like, no, I do mixed martial arts. And UFC is an organization. MMA is the sport. And I wanted to, you know, because when it first started, it was, a, it was just a bunch of thugs, really, fighting in a cage with no rules. And now it's turning into a proper mainstream sport. And I wanted to help it get to that level. Not that I ever, you know, I'm only in North Wales, but I'm trying to promote around here that we're, we're good guys. We just like fighting and it's competition to us. I don't have anything against the person I'm fighting. Sometimes there's a bit of trash talk, but the person I fight, I'll respect before and I'll respect after. But when we're in there and the, and the ref says go, then I'm trying to take your head off. That's the, and he's trying to take mine off. That's, it's just a sport. It's like... It's like football, it's like anything. It's just competition to me. I started taking it seriously, not even for my first fight. I started taking it seriously after, after my first fight. That's when I started training properly, eating properly. Because my first fight I won, but I was so unfit. I mean, after a minute, I couldn't really breathe. I was gassed. I did get caught in a tight choke in the first 10, 15 seconds. But like, as soon as that fight finished and I won, I collapsed in the back. I was flipping, not collapsed like, completely. I didn't go unconscious or anything. I was just like exhausted. I was puking in a bucket. I didn't have any idea what to eat. I mean, there's certain foods you should eat like chicken and rice or pasta or something, you know, fuel your body properly on fight day. I had a jacket potato with cheese and beans, which are terrible before competition with a Red Bull. Like, and it's just terrible, like, the, the worst, the worst idea of a pre-fight meal ever. And I've, I've learned from that since then to fuel the body properly. And you know what I mean? You, you just, it's progression with each fight. Every fight's harder and harder. So when you come up against better competition, uh, sorry, better opposition, then you're going to take your training more seriously. You're going to eat cleaner. You're going to. It's until you turn professional, it's not really a job. So in the amateurs, I did take it seriously, but I kind of thought this is only amateur. When I turn pro, I'll really turn it on, and I'll. This is my life. Then that's my job, effectively. So yeah, just every fight and every session, you get better and better and take it more seriously. I think I had ten fights at. Uh, lightweight and then I decided to go up when I went up um, I won two on the bounce and then my coach just said do you want to go pro I think you're ready to go pro now I had 12 amateur fights won nine lost three but since turning my body into a welterweight I've not been beat I've not been close to getting beat I feel better than ever um, and then I had two fights at pro and on the third one my coach said um, what about cage warriors echo arena do you want to fight this lad this Irish guy called Dylan Manning, and I said, yeah, of course, I'll fight him, 100%. I want to get on that big show, uh, which was streamed on Sport Bible. Loads of people seen it around the world. Um, I ended up beating him in the second round. I broke my hand in the first round and still beat him in the second, so that was quite an accomplishment. Everyone was, I was like, hey, you know. All the boys were like, oh, man, you broke your hand and still won. Fucking hell, you're a warrior. And I was like, yeah, it's right. Um, no, only messing, I wasn't really, but it felt good to still get the win. Um, but yeah, I want to keep going on them big shows. You need to be intelligent as a fighter. You need to be intelligent. You need to have the heart. You need to have the drive, determination. If you haven't got the heart, then I think you, you can have all the ability in the world, but when, when your adversity comes to you, if you can't overcome it with the heart, then you're not really going to make it. I think I pride myself on I'd never quit. I'd never quit in a fight. Um, um, for the mental, I, do, I read a lot of books. Um, a lot of like, what's the word? Not self-help books, but books... Um, about having a strong mindset and you know never doubting yourself and being confident just things like that I've had 16 fights now 12 amateur 4 pro I don't feel the need to beat the shit out of each other in the gym I want to save my walls for the fucking cage I mean I know how to fight I know I can fight I know I'm tough I know I'm fit I know I'm strong I don't need to have gym wars 2-3 times a week I save the best me for the cage so I'll spar hard once a week but apart from that I mean you don't really want to be taking too many blows to the head. I don't want to be punch drunk in my thirties. I'm only 27. I want to have a life for my family, my kids. You know, I want, I want them to grow up and see me as a healthy, fit man, not as an old, you know, in a wheelchair or something and can't really look after myself. I want to, I want, I want to limit the strikes that I take to the head and just, you know, look after myself. As mad as it seems, I'm stepping into a cage and fighting someone, but at the same time, you've got to take care of yourself. Work it, make it, do it, makes us harder, better, faster, stronger. Get that, 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 that don't kill me, can only make us stronger. I need you to hurry up now, cause I can't wait much longer. I know I got to be right now, cause I can't get much stronger. Man, I've been waiting all night now.
that's how long I've been on ya. Let's get lost tonight. You could be my black Kate Moss tonight. Play secretary on the ball tonight. And you don't give a f what they all say, right? Awesome to Christian and Christian Dior. Damn, they don't make them like this anymore. I ask, cause I'm not sure. Do anybody make real s anymore? Bow in the presence of greatness. Cause right now, that has forsaken us. You should be honored by my lateness. That I would even show up to this place. So go ahead, go nuts, go ace. Especially in my pastel on my page. Act like you can't tell who made this new gospel. Homie, take six and take this. Haters. That, 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 that don't kill me. Can only make me stronger. I need you to hurry up now. Cause I can't wait much longer. I know I got to be right now. Cause I can't get much stronger. Man, I've been waiting all night now. That's how long I've been on ya. Me like right now. I don't know if you get a man or not If you made plans or not If God put me in your plans or not I'm tripping this drink, got me saying a lot But I know that God put you in front of me So how the hell could you front on me? It's a thousand years, it's only one of me I'm tripping, I'm caught up in the moment, right? Cause it's Louis Vuitton dying night So we gon' do everything the kind like Heard they do anything for a Klondike Well I'll do anything for a blind and she'll do anything for the limelight And we'll do anything when the time's right Uh, baby, you're making it faster, Oh, that, 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 that don't kill me oh. Can only make me stronger oh. I need you to hurry up now oh. Cause I can't live much longer oh. I know I got to be right now oh. Cause I can't get much stronger oh. Man, I've been waiting all night now That's how long I've been on ya Like I never told you. Never, never, Don't act like I never, never, told you. Uh. Don't act like I never, told you. 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 Uh. Baby, you're making it all up. Faster, stronger. Let that, 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 that don't kill me. Can only make me stronger. I need you to hurry up now. Cause I can't get much stronger. I got to be right now, cause I can't get much stronger. Man, I've been waiting all night, man. That's how long I've been on ya. I need you right now. I need you right now. You know how long I've been on ya. Since Christmas, don't act familiar. Since OJ had ice and toners, don't act like I never told ya. You know how long I've been on ya. Since Christmas, don't act familiar. Since OJ had ice and toners, don't act like I never told ya.